an awesome moment in your presence, even as we read through your word, even as we listen to your word, even as we praise you, we need your direction, we need your walk, Lord, that you may lead us towards your light, and we shall bless you, O God. Receive all the honor at the end of this service, you lead and guide us, Holy Spirit, anoint us and grace us to everything and everything we shall do, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's have a moment of worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. The Lord is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Amen. To pick up one of my coffee.
Vision uh, this evening, dear Lord, that truly you are Elohim, the God who never change. You fight for your people, you stand with them, Abba Father, and that is what we stand with even this afternoon, Lord. May your name be glorified, may your name be exalted in everything, even as we continue to hear from you, O oh God, speak to your, wa your word into our hearts, that we may live for it, Abba Father, that we may hide ourselves into this word that has life, that holds life, that will sustain and keep us, O oh dear Lord, to the end of ages. May your name be glorified, may your name be exalted, Holy Spirit, may you continue to help us listen, and not just hear, listen to your word, and out of it, Lord, we know we shall find life and whatever you desire in our lives. Your name be glorified and honored in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, praise and worship. And uh, praise God. Uh, it's another Wednesday where we have our mid-week uh, service. And I bless the Lord because of this opportunity to come and just uh, do a study of his word, meditate upon his word, and just learn something that the Holy Spirit will continue to even help us understand the ways of God. The Holy Spirit will continue to encourage, exhort us, and just reveal himself into our lives in Jesus' name. My name is Dokas, uh, and I'm born again. Christ Jesus is my personal Savior. And today I want us to take us uh, through, uh, the topic of the day is uh, levels of encountering Jesus. The levels unto which each one of us can encounter Christ the levels each one of us can have an experience with God. We have different levels of encountering Christ. We have different uh, levels uh, of revelation of who God is, of who Jesus Christ is. And sometimes we fail uh, to have that encounter because we don't know to which level we can encounter ourselves. There are times the manifestation of Jesus Christ and his love in our lives, the doings of God in our lives are he inhibited they are limited because of the way we have connection with him. The way we relate with him. And so today, the word that will lead us in is in John chapter 4. Is the story of the Samaritan woman. And I want us just to read through, uh, even as I explain, from verse 9. And the Bible says, Then said, uh, it's after the experience with Jesus Christ. And I'll read from verse 9, after Jesus uh, came, let me read from verse 7. It says, There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask drink of me? Who am I? I'm a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, who is it that said to you, Give me a drink, you would, you would have asked of him that he would give you a living water. Then the woman said to him, unto him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. From where then will you have that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whatsoever, whatsoever drinks of this water shall, shall thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I, sh I shall give him shall never be thirsty. But the water that I give you, I give him, shall be in him a well of water springing up everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst again, neither come here to draw water. Then Jesus said unto her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, You have said well, I have no husband, for you have five husbands. He who you now have is not your husband, and said you truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive you are a prophet. Our father worshipped in this mountain, and you say, In Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. 
Then Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour has come when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you worship, you worship, you know not what. We know that we worship, we know what we worship, for salvation is for the Jews. But the hour comes and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah comes, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto you, I'm he. I want to talk about levels of encountering Christ. This is a Samaritan woman. She's coming at mid, uh, midday to draw water from the well. Jesus has sat, came and sat on the well. The disciples went away to get some food from the town. And so as Jesus was sitting, this woman comes. And when this woman comes and finds Jesus, Jesus is telling this woman, give me some water to drink. And that is when they are having a conversation with this Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me some water? Yet I'm a Samaritan. As we don't have a deal. We don't uh, sit together. We don't have a relationship. There were some uh, ancestral wars or maybe conflict between the Jews and the Samaritan. As much as the Samaritans were Jews, but they were Jews who had intermarried, those who had interacted with the Gentiles and other people. And so the pure Jews felt that these were like an outcast to their tribe. And so they separated with them. In fact, Samaria was a town that no pure Jew could go into. They could not pass through. And so they used to go around the Samar Samaritan town. And so Jesus meets with this woman. She knows historically they cannot connect. Historically, they, they don't have a relationship. They cannot share anything. And she's reminding Jesus, by the way, don't you know we don't connect? Don't you know that we can't have a relationship? Hatwezi, wezi nyomba maji. In fact, you should not even talk to me. You should not be talking to me. But Jesus introduces a conversation that leaves us asking, is it an encounter that this woman is having that is different from an encounter she has had with six men? This is a gentleman, a mepata. To her, this is not Jesus. It's like any other man. It's a Jewish man seated on the well. And as she know you, Mwanaume, and already I have six. What are you telling me? And so, we find in verse 9, this woman is saying, You ask a drink of me. Who am I? A woman of Samaria. For you, the Jews have no uh, dealings with the Samaritan. In fact, she's saying, I'm a Samaritan, you are a Jew. This is the first encounter for this woman. She's encountering what she has been used of hearing. This is a Jew, I'm a Samaritan, we don't connect, we don't have dealings. And this is the first encounter as Christians we have. That at times we have an encounter with the kingdom of God, and we believe this is not our kingdom, it belongs to them. We encounter with Jesus through preaching. People are preaching good news each and every day. But you think the kingdom of God, good news is not for us, for you. It's for them. We cannot be born again because getting born again is for our shamba. Getting born again is for the people of Pentecostal. We cannot have an encounter with the Holy Ghost because we are we are missing out an encounter with Jesus just because we have perceptions that the kingdom of God, these things are not meant for us. The perception reads and says it belongs to a certain people. I cannot talk with tongues. It belongs to a people. I cannot read the word of God. It should be read by pastors. We have assumptions. We have preconceived ideas that makes us limit ourselves 
from encountering who Christ is? Are you just a Samaritan telling Jesus, I don't belong to you? Are you a Samaritan bringing a bridge, tribal bridge, status quo? You are telling Jesus, no, salvation ya wale ambao hawana. But Jesus is telling us, we need to deal, uh, to get away with those preconceived ideas. We need to do away with those, those uh, uh, thoughts, the things to ambaza to mebebana nazo. Watu wakanisa pisia wenzi fanya hivi. They cannot worship God and just kneel down and experience the moment with God. We have already traditions that sometimes zina tufunga tunakosa kukutana na buwana. Number two in verse 11, this woman said, the woman said unto him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with. Pala mbele amesema, you are a Jew. And this woman has grown from the level of women in Jew in Samaritan. Now she's calling Jesus, Sir, a formality. An encounter has, exchange, uh, has changed. I saw you as a Jew, now I see you as a master. Sir, sometimes we, for, we make uh, salvation a formal thing. We make it so formal in the sense you can't have intimacy with God. Sir, Jesus Christ, I come before you because I need this and this. Sir, Jesus, can't you do this for me? You are making it so official that even Christ cannot have a place in you. You are taking as if this is a master. And this is a slave. You are going before God as a slave. You are going before God and telling him, Sir, I'm before you. My master, I'm before you. And you can imagine a master to a slave. You don't expect humility in a master. It's like, what do you want? What are you expecting? And so we miss out on the intimacy of God when you make God a formal being. When you make him so formal in the sense you cannot have an experience god is calling us to a place where you can kneel, kneel down not like a slave but as a child of god experiencing and telling god daddy i am here and that is why the word of god says we are being given authority to call him our father he is our father he has everything he has all humility when you are down when you call unto him as our father to lift you up and telling you, what do you want, my son? In verse 19, if you read, in fact, between verse 11 to verse 17, he's saying, sir, give me this water that, may not, uh, that I may not thirst. He's referring to this master, this gentleman. There's a lot of, he sees Jesus as a gentleman. And by any kind, any, like any other Jew, there's something peculiar in Jesus that this woman is recognizing. The third encounter for this woman. In verse 19, she says, it says, The woman said unto him, Sir, I now perceive you are a prophet. Another encounter for this woman. Sir, I now perceive you're not a master. You're not a, a, a formal boss. You're not a gentleman I saw. You are now, I perceive. kamacho. I have an, a, diff, a different experience of you. I have a different uh, mindset of you. I have a different perception. Now I don't see a master. I see a prophet in you. It is an experience that is above a Jew. It is an experience that is above a master. A prophet is someone who declares and things are. A prophet is someone who declares into your life and there is life and there is prosperity. I now perceive Jesus. You are no longer that man. You are no longer yule mungu wa kinanani. You are a prophet. Speak life into me. Speak restoration. I know I'm a prostitute. I know I've wasted myself. I know I don't deserve even to walk among women, they'll shout and disgrace me. I know I deserve shame before the men. I know I'm defiled. But Jesus, you are the prophet. And I have encountered a prophet. Speak life. 
speak restoration speak salvation into me i need you because i perceive you are a prophet and finally in verse 25 the woman said unto him i know that you are the messiah i know that the messiah comes who is christ and when he comes he will tell us all things this woman saw a prophet now she has seen a messiah her salvation has come her redemption has come it is an experience that has come into her life it's an encounter that this is not the jew i saw at first this is not the master i saw at first in fact this is not the prophet i've seen he is the messiah christ jesus has met with me christ jesus the savior of the world who shall come and tell of all the things we need to hear the good things that the land will be healed the good things that COVID-19 will come to an end. The good things that there is restoration in the land. The good things that the church will be restored back. The good things that the family will stand again. The one who came to say and to speak of all things has come. I have an encounter with him. And so people of God, which is that level of encounter? that you are in with Jesus? Are you just a formal Christian that comes and just and have a formal experience with God? Unahubiriwa kanisa inaisha, unatoka unaenda. Are you that Christian that just sees Jesus as a Jew? Kanisa ni Are you that Christian who is looking up to this prophet to speak into your life and declare things? Are you that Jesus who has an experience, an encounter with Messiah? the savior of the world the one that holds life the one that holds every revelation of everything that comes he's coming to speak newness in your life he's coming to reveal himself in a new way in your business in your life in your marriage do you have an, an encounter and once you have an encounter with messiah you'll jubilate and run into the town and speak and evangelize like this woman and tell the nations, and tell your family, and tell the church of God, come and see the Messiah. Come and see the one who was, who is, and shall always be. Come and see the Alpha and Omega. Come and see Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Until then, will we have an encounter with God. May God help us, even as we grow to that level, of having intimacy with Messiah, having intimacy with Jehovah Shalom, having intimacy with Jehovah uh, Elohim, having intimacy with Al Shaddai, having intimacy with Jehovah Rapha, because with, until then, will we experience an encounter with Christ that will change us, and we're going to go out and change our nation, and go out and change our family, and all of us shall come running to Messiah, and declare the one who was told, the one ambaya liambi watakuja, amekuja in our town. May God bless you and do you good. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your words over these uh, midweek service. Help us to have encounter with you. And not just an encounter like Jews. Not like an encounter with the Samaritans. Not like an encounter for a slave and a master. We need an encounter with a prophet. We need an encounter with you, Messiah. Because out of you, Jesus Christ, will have life. And not just life, salvation. We'll find restoration. We'll find hope, healing, and everything we desire in our lives, we shall receive from you, Messiah. May your name be glorified. May your name be exalted in Jesus' name. May God bless you even as we continue to meditate upon the word of God. Even as we see each other on Sunday, be careful to heed unto the word of God. Because in the word, there is life. May God bless you and do your good. Shalom. Shalom. Naijulikane wewe ni mungu Naijulikane wewe ni mungu